their truth and mix God's truth with man's truth and versus having all of God's truth. And on that day, God will say, depart from me, I never knew you. Why? Because they did not have their armor held together by the true truth of God's word. And we are living in that very day and age. How many preachers that say that you can go out and do this and still make it to heaven? Or you can do this and still go to heaven? Or how many quote-unquote religions are there out there that say you'll go to heaven, it doesn't matter what you do, but hell's just a figment of your imagination. Hell doesn't really exist. It's just a place to scare people into getting saved. It's just a scare tactic. Or, uh, I don't like to preach on hell because it is a bad place and it gives people negative effects. It, it leaves them worried and um, in turmoil. I was told of a preacher. He was actually a Las Vegas showsman. He was on a talk show. And he got up and he preached on hell. And he preached fire and brimstone. And there were people that were worried and crying in the audience. They were all concerned. But how did he end his quote-unquote act? He just brushed off and said, you know what? It's all fake. It's not true. You know, even the sinner can treat, preach the truth of God's word and conviction following individuals. But that person who was on that show, who was the center of attention, just lied to all those people and preached a false truth. Where is our truth founded? Because it's what pulls our entire armor together. When we doubt God and say that God can't quite do this, we weaken our armor. When we mix it with God's truth, we weaken our armor. When we rely upon ourselves and what we think, we can work, weaken our armor because we are susceptible to the knowledge and truth of man. That's why we need to be careful. It's not just out there in the world. It's not just in textbooks. It's not just in astronomy magazines. It is absolutely everywhere, including the church. And it's up to us how we will allow, or which truth we will allow our fellow to be composed of, because it's what holds everything together. The soldier with cheap armor is basically sending himself on a suicide mission. Because you do not know whether or not it is going to hold up when you need it to. But for us as Christians, how do we obtain truth? And this is an open discussion question. If we are going to make sure that our belt is composed of truth, and the right truth. How do we do that? How do we obtain truth? Get in the Word. Study the Word of God. The Bible instructs us, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the Word of truth. So we get into the Word of God. We read it. We study it. How else? Apply it in our own life. Would someone please read John chapter 14 and verse 26, John 14, 26, and someone else, 1 John 2 and 27. So the Holy Ghost is the revealer of truth. So we study the Word of God, but we allow the Holy Ghost to make it real to our lives. Because we can read the Bible just to read it. But we need to read it in such a way that we allow God to speak to our hearts through the Holy Ghost. If something needs to change, God change me. Help me in this area. Didn't say it would always be easy. But we need to allow Him to help us to apply it to our lives. How about 1 John 2.27? No lie, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. 
So the Holy Ghost is the revealer of truth, and he will teach us in all things. You know, sometimes there are things in the Word of God that some people say this is the way it is, some people say this is the way it is. But when we allow God to reveal it to us, to us and give us the truth of his word, that's when our belt becomes more solid and more, more sturdy. And how do we allow him to reveal it to us? Well, sometimes we need to pray until we know what the truth is. And it's not only <coughs> going to be a 10-second prayer. Sometimes it's hours of sitting down on our hands and knees, praying and seeking the face of God. God, what does this passage really mean? God, what do you mean? God, what is this? We need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for knowledge. What else might we, uh, how else might we obtain the truth? By going to church. By going to church. Bible commands us from safe not dissembling of ourselves together. Why? Because it's not just the fellowship, but the Bible instructs us that God has given gifts to the church. To the church. God has given gifts to the church. He's given us prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors, all for the edification of the saints. That we may know what truth is, that we may know what truth is to apply to our life, and that we may know how to apply it to our life. What else might we do to obtain truth? Probably the most important one is develop our relationship with the one who is true. When we look at the word of God, we can look at the promises of God. We can look at his blessings. But when we get down to the Bible as a, in a nutshell, what do we have to do to have everything handed to us? There is one thing that we can do to have everything handed to us. It's even a song. We haven't sung it in a long, long time, but it is a song. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if we chase after God, everything will fall into place. Yes, we have to go to church. Yes, we need to read our Bible. Yes, we need to study our Bible. Yes, we need to allow the Holy Ghost to reveal the truth of God's Word to us. But the more that we chase after God, all those things will fall right into place. You know, there are people that study the Word of God, and they have a lot of head knowledge. But because they never prayed about it, they don't have a heart knowledge. We can know the Bible inside and out. But if we never take the word of God to God in prayer, it will never take root in our heart. Why does the Bible talk about the different types of ground? Some will be stony ground. Some will be stony ground. Some will be good soil. Why? Because some people are ready to receive the word. But there's a lot more that have things in the way. That whether they are thinking, God, that's not for me, and it falls by the wayside. Or, um, it works for, oh, it is for them, they know it, but they never take it to God in prayer. And because that, the enemy comes in as a bird and plucks out the seeds that were planted. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Develop a, relation, a relationship with the one who is word. Chase after God and seek the truth of his word. What does Psalms chapter 23 and verse 3 state? Psalm 23, 3. Your sword for soul to the path of That God restores his soul. He leadeth him in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. What is that? He's leading him in the path of truth. Leading him in the way that he should go. If we are going to hold our armor together properly, we have to base it upon the correct truth. If we do not base, compose our belt with the proper truth, then our armor is not going to be held together properly. And we've already weakened ourselves. Because we've based it not wholly upon the truth of God's word, but we've mixed it 
and pervert it with man's truth. And we weaken the armor already at that point. Does anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to add? If not, let's bow our heads and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there's none like you. Now, even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property, above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset, one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move, making himself visible if he so chooses, Lord. I pray right now that you can remain the song leader and the musicians, Lord, as they lead us in the songs you have us to sing, as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords, Lord. Anoint the pastor as he brings forth your word today. Anoint his mind and his lips to bring forth your word. We ask, Lord, that our hearts and our minds will be prepared, that they be good soil for your word to fall on, that we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives, that we may be even drawn closer to you than ever before, that we may know you like never before. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 